be answered is how the violent is how is the violence affecting immigration in the country now to this question and others in our studio we are joined this morning by uh, the head of communications at home affairs Maitlome Schwete very good morning to you good morning and good morning to your viewers we're in a very difficult situation, aren't we, in South Africa at the moment? We, we're kind of damned if we do and damned if we don't. And how, do you, how do you guys consume what's going on now, what's been going on, both inside of our borders and then, of course, what's happening outside of our borders? Well, I think what we try to do is try to um, focus on the context of this. Mm -hmm. South Africa is not unique uh, to the extent of having migration uh, um, debates. Mm. Uh, we, we are now watching America having similar discussions yeah. with the, the um, southern border with Mexico. We are watching the EU having similar discussions with um, East Europe about migration. So South Africa isn't, isn't uh, unique. The, 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 the pursuit of migrants for stability and economic mm. activity is a global phenomenon. Yeah. What we have always argued as a Department of Home Affairs is that it must be managed better and mm. that's what we are trying to do. Some of the, those interventions are um, uh, the international migration policy that the minister spearheaded, which is going to look at an, a number of approaches to mm. managing migration better. Uh, the other one is the border management agency, which yeah. is going to help us man our border a lot better so that we can minimize irregular movement across yeah. the border. Um, and then the other one is also the refugee amendment bill, which is currently in parliament. This mm. is to prevent economic migrants using the asylum seeker system to get into the country yeah. so that we actually have genuine refugees being protected as our constitution expects and we prevent economic migrants from um, using that loophole that exists there on screen now we see these pictures uh, uh, that have been beamed all over the continent we we even see fake news and 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 fake images and and fake videos or videos from other parts of the world that are broadcast in other african countries uh, and saying that these are the acts happening in south africa the one thing that disturbed me is that even members of the Pan-African Parliament are refusing to travel to South Africa now because they say, well, they don't, they fear for their safety. How do you think these kinds of images, the looting, these things, how is it affecting our, how is it affecting our image firstly, but also how is it affecting immigration to the country right now? Look, I, I think it would be very unfair on South Africa to, to now, because of a few people that acted mm. outside of the law, to refer to all South Africans as xenophobic, mm. simply because we boast amongst the most Afropolitan countries on the continent. Yeah. No one is taken in the type of mixed flow of migrations that South Africa is, and we're proud of that. Yeah. So I think to, to now take these unfortunate incidents that have happened mm. and then cast them as what you should expect from South Africa is a misrepresentation of mm. truth, and it's a deliberate and convenient um, uh, uh, ignoring of, of what South Africa has been doing yeah. in the last 20 years. Our, our 1.3 million um, asylum seekers that we've taken in from protection of perse persecution, mm. the economic migrants we've taken in, the Zimbabwe special permit, the Lesotho special permit, the Angolan secession. So all of these things you ignore and you focus on the actions of a few people yeah. and say that South Africans are xenophobic. I think people who do that are not being genuine. Yeah, it's a little bit simplistic in a way to, to, to think like that. And, and it's sort of counterproductive to what, what's been achieved. But... Now, we, we, we sat with a problem. The numbers are often exaggerated about how many people are in South Africa. Um, the Africa Diaspora Forum, they've come out now and, and they're talking about maybe you guys at Home Affairs should consider a complete amnesty for all immigrants that are in South Africa now uh, and then start the process from there. How do, you, how do you view this kind of, uh, this kind of request or, or this kind of idea? Look, I, I think Mark, Mark is pushing boundaries. Um, and excuse the pun on that. But uh, the, the, the issue here, and he argues that if, if, if we give amnesty and we give documentation to everyone who's in South Africa, yeah. supposedly this is going to stop more people from coming. This is mm. what he argues. What we've seen is something completely different. When we gave the Zimbabwe special permit, it didn't stop more Zimbabweans trying to apply for, for access to the country. Yeah. So what we are trying to do is, is responsibly handle migration. We cannot, as South Africa, be the sole bearer of all of the African um, um, citizens of, of, mm. of our continent. We have our own citizens to be responsible for, but more importantly, we have a, a limited uh, budget to, to try service our citizens. We have a constitutional responsibility to take in refugees and we have an economic benefit mm. to take in um, 
economic migrants that contribute to our economy. Yeah. But we cannot uh, uh, merely um, you know, do this open approach that he, he, is, um, he is asking for. I think there are two dangers here. Mm. Those that say we should just have an open border and those that say we should seal our border off. Yeah. We as Home Affairs are trying to strike a balance between the two. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you have to find uh, you have to find uh, find that balance. But one of the plans that you guys are envisaging is is the one of taking action against companies, unscrupulous uh, managers, and the like who are uh, employing uh, uh, illegal foreign nationals for uh, for very little money, and and that in itself causes a lot of consternation within South Africans. What's that plan? How far is it along? Yeah, and thank you for bringing that up. I mean, it's, it's impossible to talk about xenophobia and these attacks without talking about the socioeconomic context mm -hmm. of it. So um, people looking for job opportunities is something that's been happening for millennia. Our economy being built on cheap labor is also something mm -hmm. that's been happening for, for, for a long time. Yeah. So we are trying to now shift our attention from chasing those vulnerable mig migrants that are looking mm -hmm. for work opportunities and focus more on the businesses that are flouting our, our policies, our yeah. laws and regulations. Many of these tensions are created by those businesses. When we had an interaction with Mamalodi Concerned Community, they say to us, there's a spa in their community that says to them bluntly that we are only employing um, yeah. migrant workers. So this in a small community, in the context of um, you know, challenging yeah. economic dynamics, is going to fuel tensions. Absolutely, and, and one see those tensions. You, you see those tensions not just uh, in the big cities, but in even the small little towns all across the country. Those of, uh, those of you that travel around, you should have a look at, at that because it's, it's really real. I want to conclude by talking about our relationship with countries like Zimbabwe and even, uh, even uh, uh, Nigeria. You know, if you read the mainstream media, they'll tell you, oh, these relationships are in tatters and these people don't respect us anymore. What is your view? It's unfortunate. The facts don't speak to that. Mm. The facts that we have a lot of um, foreign nationals from, from Zimbabwe, from Nigeria, from Kenya who reside in South Africa, mm. who visit South Africa, and vice versa, that we have South Africans that travel to Nigeria, that travel to Kenya. We have businesses that are moving into the Sadak region, the Mr. Prices, the, yeah. the Peps, and all of these other shops. And then we have MTN that's in Nigeria. So the, the facts don't speak to that perception. So I yeah. think the perception is unfortunate. In conclusion, the, we're asking a question to our viewers, and I'll take some tweets after this interview. We're asking our viewers because it, uh, we feel it's something that everyone in South Africa needs to get involved in, is how do we prevent these kind of outbreaks of sporadic violence against foreign nationals in the future? How do we stop violence? Period. How do we prevent specific yeah. uh, attacks on, on, I, on foreign nationals? I think the priority is to stop violence, period. Yeah. Um, South Africans... Um, we tend to use violence as a means to communicate. Mm. And government and community leaders must also take uh, um, some, some fault in that because it means at some point where there's a breakdown in communication where people are feel like we're not responding to the issues they're raising. Yeah. But ultimately, violence should not be a tool of communication in any instance, mm. whether you are um, protesting for water or whether you are protesting yeah. against uh, what you perceive as uh, irregular movement of migrants. Yeah. Violence should not be used and we are working with our counterparts in police to make sure that those people that use violence, whether they have good intentions or not, yeah. are, are, are dealt with um, as our law prescribes them to be dealt with. That is a very sobering view for us today. Thank you. Mai Lome Chwete is the head of communications at the Home Affairs here in South Africa. And yes, violence in general is what we need to stop. We have rule of law here in South Africa. We should all respect that and we should all respect our fellow citizens, including what we call foreign nationals who live in this land. Now, let's take those comments to, uh, to the question of today. I've just asked uh, Mai Lome that question and you guys are telling us uh, Spinelli says xenophobia is wrong, but this doesn't make illegal migration right. And that is one of those things at the heart of the entire discussion. Good comment there. Monoabiz Mbonda says, Newsroom, these people are our brothers and sisters. We must love them and share business with them. Monoabise, the Afropolitan. Very good. Lechasa says, I'm suggesting if our government can improve the security at our borders and not take bribery from foreigners. You've just heard that from my Maitlomit He says that is the plan. Improve the way our borders work. 
not just build fences, but improve the way the borders work, improve the services there. Isaac Lusenga, he comes, he says, Newsroom, the Home Affairs and Police should look on that. Yes, they are. They are working together. You've just heard that. It's nice to, it's nice to hear from such a professional communicator about what is really happening. Tambash Laki Shabangu, he says, Newsroom, we must love these people as our brothers and we must work with them. Yes, we must. This is Africa. This is South Africa. We all have a responsibility. You, me, the way we bring up our children, what we teach our children about all of these processes is very important. It happens, it starts in our own homes. That is the truth. Now, let's take a look at what's on social media right now. Of course, uh, a, a heart-wrenching story at the uh, Charlotte Makeke Hospital, of course, part of the past part of the institution collapsed there. A ceiling fell on, on, on six people. That's following several complaints and concerns being raised in the past about the health and safety of this building. Now, there's going to be a lot said about this. Now, emergency services, we have to commend them. They work through the night to clear rubble there. And uh, the hospital is once again 100% operational, which of course is the good news. Then, uh, more troubling news from yesterday. Look at this picture. Uh, uh, motorists were faced, faced with flooding at the Galulis interchange. Now, for those of you living outside of Johannesburg, Galulis is one of the main, main crossover, crossovers on your way to the airport. That's the Oa Tambo Airport. It caused quite a lot of chaos on the roads in that area, and many cars were damaged. Lesejo, uh, well, he tweeted this and he said to us, Galulis intersection must just be cancelled. It's like that kid brother who's forever in trouble and your folks don't shout at him anymore. <laughs> he says that because it was flooded the last time as well, and we lost quite a few lives there. So um, they must just cancel this intersection. Unfortunately, we, can, we can't. It's one of the great crossovers here in Johannesburg that connects east with west. It's one of the, uh, it's one of the most important inter interchanges here in the city of Gold. Of course, people are also uh, uh, talking about uh, the hashtag Ngugi public lecture that took place the one last night. Now, one of Africa's greatest intellectuals spoke on decolonizing education, the richness in opportunity that Africa has and how the African mind has become so sought after. Go and have a look. Go and have a read. You might surprise yourself. Also, there seems to be uh, a anticipation building for the Soweto Derby. Uh, yes, uh, that is set to take place tomorrow. Don't forget, 3.30 at Nazrek here in Johannesburg. FMB Stadium. Kaiser Chiefs will go up against the people's team, Orlando Pirates. Should be interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of going on, goings on in the world of football in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks not all of it very good one has to add let's hope we have a great spectacle with lots of goals now for a picture of the day this one comes from uh, King Arthur who says oh no these people were warned before and take a look at this picture if you look at there's a date on there at the top it's circled in red it says warned before that